Hello, welcome to another edition of Talking Sports and Fitness with Zeke. I'm Zeke, sometimes known as Mike Zelensky. I'm honored today to have as my guest Chris Keg. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Chris has an incredible story, uh, which I want him to share with all of you. And it's a very inspiring story. And uh, he has not only been transformative for himself, but so, so many others. Uh, you were a Marine, a young stud, and uh, you, uh, something probably changed your life forever. Tell us about that, that run that you guys were doing. Uh, the run that we did, um, th that my diagnosis started? No, the run where uh, you were inspired my by moment, a yeah. drill instructor. <laughs> Those kind, benign guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, when, I went to, when I went to boot camp, I was uh, you know, uh, fairly overweight. So um, being in boot camp for you know, three months was a pretty challenging thing. And I had shins. You didn't think to try and get a little in shape no, I, I, I No, because I was a stupid 17-year-old. <laughs> um, I really wish I would have prepared myself a lot better. Yeah. Um, but when I was um, at boot camp, our last um, motivational run was like about four miles. And that was after our uh, our PFT, and they put us into speed groups. I got with my my one of my drill instructors, who was a Force Recon Marine, uh, drill instructor Sergeant Hart, who is uh, you know somebody who I respect very much. And he basically took us on a sprint for four miles. And I did not think that I was going to make it. My shins were killing me. I thought I was going to die. Um, but he yelled out five words. He said, "Don't quit on me, Keg." And that was obviously the, the only time I've ever heard them say anything encouraging. Um, but at the same time, when he said that to me, I, I didn't quit. Uh, when I crossed the finish line, I collapsed and you know thought I was going to die. But at the same time, I, I did it. So it didn't hit me till later on that that was actually my defining moment of what I could accomplish. And at that moment, actually, you accomplished finishing that run. I don't think you could have foreseen any idea how important those words would be for you Absolutely. ongoing. So share what happened. You uh, while you were in the Marines, you came down with a degenerative nerve disorder in your legs, which is such a rare thing. And how do you pronounce it? It's adrenal myeloneuropathy. It's a degenerative uh, X-link disorder. And I was overseas in Aviano, Italy um, during, during Bosnia and went out for a run, just like I always do getting ready for my uh, physical fitness test. I had played rugby a month before that, had no problems. And then all of a sudden my feet just started to drag and I started to feel weakness in my hip flexors. Um, so I did, really had no idea what was wrong, but they sent me back to the States uh, and I spent nine weeks at Walter Reed Hospital and that's when I was diagnosed. It must have been difficult to diagnose since it's so rare, right? Yeah, I was in the hospital for about nine weeks. Now, it's an, it was an incremental thing. You could walk, it affected your walk for a while, then I guess you were on crutches and then in the chair. How long are you in the wheelchair? Um, so it went from walking with one cane then to two canes and then within five years I was in a chair. Okay. What brought someone like that, and obviously you were determined not to let it dominate your life. So you started working out very heavily because of that, and that's why you became a trainer. Um, to be honest, when I when I got out of the Marine Corps, I just you know continued to do the things that I could do. Fortunately, I could still you know walk, and I could still do a lot of things. I just couldn't run. Um, so I was very much into being. Um, you know, into fitness, I became a trainer at Y Missing Health Club uh, back in the day, um, and then I started to uh, to do some military style stuff with some people, and just liked the, uh, the the feeling that I got from being able to hopefully inspire and motivate as many people as possible. And when they saw the condition that I had and the fact that I couldn't do the things that they could do, hopefully they wouldn't complain too much. If you hadn't become a Marine, and obviously you would have gotten this disorder sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Do uh, you think you would have been able to handle it as well as you did? No, absolutely not. I, yeah. I, every time I uh, speak, I, I, I always say that the Marine Corps is what saved my life. Um, the Marine Corps, you know, everybody has different opinions about military and, and what we're all about. But the military definitely um, gave me the, uh, the, the ability to overcome all my challenges. Now, you uh, obviously can't use your legs, but you're an animal from the, from the waist up. W what are some of the things that you're doing athletically and, and com competition-wise? So my competitive days are sort of uh, sort of over. Um, kind of happens, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I just I, I just I, I enjoy getting out and doing the yeah. things that I do. I, I mountain bike every day, so I leave from my gym and go over to the Highlands on my mountain bike, um, which is about seven or eight miles, and it's enough. Um, so it gives me a good hour and a half to get out there and do as much as I can. So I just try to you know always try to do as much as I can working out of my gym or riding as best I can. Now tell us about you. Obviously, have a very interesting training program. 
and it's all rooted uh, with the drill instructor, Sergeant Hart, who uh, you try to push people beside, because we're all basically, to a degree, wimps inside. Uh, so you kind of push people farther than they think they can go, correct? Mm -hmm. and so you work people out very hard. And, uh, and it's not like bench pressing and stuff like that. You, I know you do some kettlebells and stuff like mm -hmm. that in CrossFit, but uh, it's about uh, what calisthenics and team training and uh, uh, you use the body for weight bearing, stuff like that. And the concept you have is you, the people work out as a team. So the elite people have to uh, do the best, but someone, you know, a 50 year old who's just only been doing 12 ounce curls and he joins the class, he has to do his end, but on a scaled down version. Tell us, how, how does that work? That, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, I, It's I've, a boot camp, I think, for all, right? Yeah, yeah I, st I started this back in 2004 out of the back of my truck. And you know, my, whole, my whole concept of, you know, when I went to boot camp, you know, I got challenged. I was 230 pounds and just totally out of shape. So obviously you have no choice. You have to challenge yourself. And there's a saying, you know, that on some of our PT um, boards, it says, if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. So that's exactly what I want to try to, you know, give to people is to give them a challenging. I'm not trying to challenge people beyond what they can accomplish. All I want to try to do is give them an environment that's going to be motivating, encouraging, and, you know, everybody's going to take care of one another. So one of my trainers, you know, a good friend of mine, he's actually a, a police officer and why I'm missing you know he said that sometimes you come in there to work out and sometimes you come in there to serve so you're there to take care of somebody else you know so that's the whole military mindset it's not about us it's about taking care of your team so every time you're in there you could be having a bad day but you know what somebody's gonna pick you up and move on so it just has a lot more motivation than doing it by yourself what about someone who has just been working out casually and there's a ton of people out there who work out casually uh, what, if they come to you, and you're located on Park Road, it's yes. Marine Corps Fitness? Core Fitness. Core Fitness. Uh, how, is it intimidating for them at first? Should they feel comfortable knowing you're not going to kill them? <laughs> This, is, this, has been a, uh, this has been a marketing challenge that I've had um, for 12 years, is that I'm trying to figure out how to make people understand that they don't need to be intimidated. I mean, I want people to know that they're going to get challenged, um, but when you come out to my facility, I like to do you know, intro classes so they get indoctrinated, so they know exactly what we're all about and what I expect, kind of explain things, so they don't just jump into a class and kind of you know, then get intimidated or feel like they can't do and it. And they drop out. Yeah, they drop out. And yeah, you don't want them to do you want to give it a shot. I'm sure you have some dropout rate. But. I, I care about every single person who comes through my doors and all I want to do is I want to try to give them the opportunity to do as best they can because once they realize how much more they can accomplish just like I did on that four mile sprint you know I realized what I could accomplish and what I could do and that has allowed me to, to continue on and do whatever I wanted to. And it's kind of like transformative for them once they pass the threshold right that boy I can do this. Yeah. And it translates to other aspects of their life, I would assume. Yeah, you're not going to be at my place 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I want people to be able to tackle challenges outside of my facility. You know, if you, you know, haven't done um, a few things or if you, there was challenges that you couldn't accomplish before, now I want you to attack those things and, you know, surprise yourself on how much you can do. I always get great stories, you know, of people who they could simply go out for a walk with their kids or they could go up this, you know, uh, big mountain with their kids because they never had that opportunity because they were overweight or out of shape. And now they have the opportunity to get out there and, and be a part of it. So it's life changing. So you can be one of those people who walk into your gym. You don't necessarily have to have a, a baseline where you've been working out a little bit. You can just walk in totally out of shape. You know, that's, that's something that people say all the time, oh, I need to get into better shape to come into your place. Well, I didn't get into any shape before I went to boot camp. And three months later, I got out 50 pounds lighter and just a, with a totally different personality or different perception on what I was able to accomplish. So people, you know, if, if they're willing to go through some challenging pain mm -hmm. and, you know, deal with the things that are going to uh, come with coming to my place, that's great. For those who don't, then good luck somewhere else. Now, do you, do you ask them for like a, maybe a medical profile? Because obviously you're not dealing with 17 year old or 18 year old young men or women in the Marines. You're, some of these people may have some health issues. Mm -hmm. So does that give you a baseline how far you can push someone? 
Absolutely. And I, yeah. and, I, and I let everybody know when they come in, you know, they need to be able to understand. They need to scale things back. They need to not do as much as the person who is a stud who's been here for 10 years. They need to just, you know, respect their abilities and understand that they can scale And do what back. you can. And, exactly. and I think no matter what gym, you know, you always walk in a gym and some guy's just lifting massive amount of weights right. and, you know, and you know, it could take 10 of you to do that. And so you can't just, you got to tune that out and ignore it. Uh, obviously you must have uh, derived a lot of intrinsic satisfaction in being so active and not allowing your, your disease to dominate your life. Do you feel a similar uh, intrinsic feeling when you transform someone else's life physically? You know, I, th this is the thing, you know, all my intro classes, I, I gotta give a little bit of a spiel beforehand, and I, I would give anything in this world um, to be able to have my legs back, yeah. to be able to go out and be challenged just like everybody else in my classes and to be able to be suffering right next to them. So I want to hopefully get that through people's heads is that, you know, appreciate what you have because, you know, it's kind of cliche. You don't want to appreciate what you have until it's gone. Um, but for somebody like myself who knows what it's like to have it gone, you would do anything to get it back. You know, so. it's, it's kind of like a bittersweet thing for you because you're helping so many people, but at the same time, you're exposed to a lot of people doing a lot of extraordinary physical things and you're robbed the, the use of your legs. And right. so that must be a little hard to deal with. It, it is, but I'm so proud of everybody. You know, I'm yeah. so proud of uh, the accomplishments that I can see because I know that they were able to do that because of, uh, of my leadership and my, you know, example. Hopefully they, you know, were able to get through some of the tough times and they could see the things that I was doing. So that's very rewarding for me to be able to see that. And I'm just so proud of them. You have to be one of the most unique trainers in the world. Um, you know what? It, 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 it is what it is. I'm a very humble person. So if that's if that's what people think, then that's cool. Uh, I, ha I have had people tell me that they would rather you know be trained by a guy in a wheelchair who they see riding every day and you yeah. know doing things a lot more than most people than you know going out to some Billy Blanks or somebody who's uh, you know who's in great shape but has all their physical you know abilities. Because yeah. I want to make sure that people understand that it's not nobody not everybody has to be a stud. You just have to get out there and do the best you can. Yeah. All right, Chris K. Take care, and please don't forget to subscribe to the People Chronicles channel on YouTube and like us on Facebook. For now, this is Zeke saying aloha. These community stories are made possible in part by BCTV, Suzy Ray Design, Queen City Family Restaurant, Lamar Advertising, Heidelberg Family Restaurant, Reading Air, Lions and Hole, Peanut Bar, and Kutztown University.